The crypto community is up in arms, filled with FUD over the notion that BitMEX, the leading and pioneering Bitcoin's future exchange located and domiciled out of the Seychelles, has just been hit with a huge injunction, with US regulators arguing that they violated the Bank Secrecy Act. Now, while most are interpreting this as a tremendously bearish signal, leading to a pretty immediate dump on the Bitcoin and Ethereum charts, the reality is I'm going to show you why this is tremendously bullish. So if you guys are excited for this episode, explaining why this FUD fueled event is actually going to be extremely beneficial long term for Bitcoin and crypto, then smash that like button because today's episode is going to set the record straight and help you understand why these events are actually necessary for the evolution of the industry. Remember that each and every comment on this video is entered to win a free Ledger Nano S, but that giveaway is for subscribers only, so you're definitely going to want to subscribe and have that bell notification on. With that said, let's dive in. Now, before we get to the meat of this video, it is October 1st. Congratulations, everybody. It's fall. We can celebrate with pumpkins and Halloween costumes and, you know, some Halloween memes. But on to the news of the day. And this is, of course, that founders and executives of offshore cryptocurrency derivatives exchange, BitMEX, charged with violation of the Bank Secrecy Act. Now, the charges here are coming from Audrey Strauss, the acting United States attorney for the Southern District of New York, and William F. Sweeney Jr., assistant director in charge of the New York field office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI. They announced an indictment against Arthur Hayes, Benjamin Dalo, Samuel Reed, and Gregory Dwyer, charging the four with violating the Bank Secrecy Act and conspiring to violate the Bank Secrecy Act by willfully failing to establish, implement, and maintain an adequate anti-money laundering AML program at the Bitcoin Mercantile Exchange, or BitMEX. The case is assigned to United States District Judge John G. Kotal. Reed was arrested in Massachusetts this morning and will be presented to federal court there. Hayes, Dello, and Dwyer remain at large, meaning I guess at the current moment they are on the run. This is kind of shocking considering Arthur Hayes was a regular guest on CNBC, referred to as Mr. GQ of crypto on not once but many times, and now he's been relegated to convict status. I don't know if this is just wording right now, I guess until they turn themselves in, they're at large. Acting Manhattan U.S. Attorney Audrey Strauss said, with the opportunities and advantages of operating a financial institution in the United States, comes the obligation for those businesses to do their part to help in driving out crime and corruption. As alleged, the these defendants flouted the obligation and undertook to operate purportedly offshore crypto exchange while willfully failing to implement and maintain even basic AML laundering policies. In doing so, they allegedly allowed BitMEX to operate as a platform in the shadows of the financial markets. Today's indictment is yet another push by this office and our partners at the FBI to bring platforms for money laundering into the light. So you can see here the anti-money laundering AML procedures are precisely the biggest target of these allegations. We all know that the no KYC thing is what's going on on a lot of these futures exchanges, but in the reality, you can't be trading futures or any financial products in the United States without essentially identifying yourself and going through AML. In my mind, this was actually just a matter of time. Nonetheless, this made crazy news on pretty much every crypto news platform and even caused a pretty significant dump here on the Bitcoin chart. A little bit of a flash crash here from 10.8 down to about 10.4. Um, it's not clear whether this crash is indicative of overall market weakness or just a belief that this would turn the sentiment. Regardless, BitMEX is still processing withdrawals as a way to show that they are still, I guess, open for business. And pretty much everyone is having the same reaction which is that this is really scary and very bad for crypto. I'm seeing tweets come in saying crypto is pretty much only used for gambling. Gambling is all that people do with crypto. And essentially, this is the world's biggest crypto casino, allowing people to shorten long on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency prices. That It's like shutting down the biggest casino in Vegas if crypto is Vegas. Now, other people are saying this is just generally bearish and shows over-regulation of the industry. But in reality, 
I believe that these people are dead wrong. And here's why. In order for me to explain it fully, I need to take a trip back in time just a few months ago. And this is back when Binance announced Binance Cloud, which was their cloud exchange infrastructure project where they would let anyone spin up an exchange in just a few days. And if you guys don't know, exchanges are fairly complex. Obviously, the matching engine isn't that complex, but with security, custodianship, and all these other things to consider when it comes into the cryptocurrency world, they actually become pretty complex beasts. And we see with even a very established exchange like KuCoin with the hack last week that even some of the best in the business can fall vulnerable to exploits. So Binance essentially running the security, building out the product, using their matching engine, holding all the coins in their custodianship, and just allowing someone to essentially spin up that exchange and promote it as a new exchange and get a cut of the profits, that was a really attractive offering from Binance Cloud, so much so that I actually submitted an application with a couple of friends of mine here in the crypto industry, and I believed we were going to create a really unique and cool futures trading experience. We ended up being the only project approved to actually become one of the exchange partners by Binance, and we were flattered by that. However, as we were getting to the final parts of this process, we started consulting with some really serious business lawyers here in the United States, and they warned us that there was a crackdown coming, and the crackdown was coming to essentially clear the way for a Bitcoin ETF. Now, if you guys are newer to crypto, you probably don't know what we're talking about when I say Bitcoin ETF. However, if you lived through the 2018 crypto bear market, you'll know that a Bitcoin ETF was pretty much all anyone ever talked about. Even in 2020, we see articles that are consistently talking about a Bitcoin ETF where everybody wanted essentially an exchange traded fund or ETF, which would allow for Bitcoin to essentially be traded on regulated stock markets. And this would allow for some of the biggest financial players to easily and in a regulated way get into and get exposure to the Bitcoin price. However, we saw rejection after rejection after rejection from the SEC throughout 2018 and beyond. One of the biggest issues here was that the commission worries about Bitcoin price manipulation. And you would say, well, what does BitMEX have to do? What do these futures exchanges have to do with Bitcoin price manipulation? The reality is a lot. Now, the reason is because of something called liquidations. If you've never traded futures before, what they allow you to do is long or short, essentially calling the direction of the Bitcoin price or really any asset that they allow for futures trading on. And you can say, I think it's going to go up or down from here, essentially. And you can actually use leverage. You could say, I only have $10, but I actually want to bet $100 that it's going to go up. And so what you're doing there is something called a 10x leverage. If the price goes up 10%, you actually make 100% gains. And that is what is so addictive about it is you can actually leverage up the amount of gains you can make. With less money, you can make more. Now, the converse of that is that you can also lose money much faster. If I have a 10x long on the books, that means that I only have a 10% margin before I'm completely liquidated. Meaning, if I put a 10x long on and the price drops by 10%, I have nothing left. My money's gone. And that's what's called a liquidation. Liquidations happen during times of tremendous volatility. You constantly hear about longs and shorts being liquidated. I'm sure you guys have heard the terms long squeeze or short squeeze. A short squeeze, for example, is when a lot of people are believing the price is going to go down, so they're shorting, and it ends up creating a huge upward spike in price because as they get liquidated, it creates a lot of buying pressure, which creates sort of like a rocket fuel exponential effect. What I'm trying to say here is that the leveraged long and shorts on platforms like BitMEX have huge impact on the Bitcoin price. And more importantly, an exchange like BitMEX is actually in many ways motivated to create liquidations. And that's what's led to the phenomenon that people call scam wicks. Now, what you're looking at behind me is a huge red candle. However, you'll notice that the wicks are really high above and really low below the actual body of where this candle started and finished the time period. Now, people call these scam wicks because in one period, it went up so much and down so much that it actually liquidated both longs and shorts, meaning that essentially the house was the only one who won that day. because in the pop up, it liquidated shorts and in the drop down 
down at liquidated longs. You might be asking, how can they manipulate the price? And well, the BitMEX price is actually calculated as an average across a variety of mainstream exchanges. However, there's only a few exchange prices that they took into account. And many suspected that this exchange, and again, I don't have data on this. This is just hearsay. This is just what I've come to understand. I'm not making any statements as to what BitMEX did or didn't do. This is just the assumption behind it and why people were believing that BitMEX and other exchanges like it are having an impact on the price. And it's because these entities like BitMEX have the amount of money necessary to buy in mass on these exchanges altogether, sending the price up and then sell in mass altogether, crashing the price down and then bringing it back up. Having the monetary incentive and the monetary capability to achieve these tasks is something that was created by having something like BitMEX get so popular. But essentially, these exchanges allow you to gamble on the price of Bitcoin and they are actually motivated in many ways to liquidate as many people as possible. And they can do that by sending the price up on partner exchanges, the ones that they're actually getting their average Bitcoin price from because they have so much money. And so people accuse them of creating what they call these scam wicks, where they go up and down so much in one period that everybody loses. So to summarize, exchanges like BitMEX are actually very capable and motivated to manipulate the Bitcoin price. And this is something that was a barrier to the SEC approving an ETF. Now, where this turns bullish is down the road as these exchanges are wiped away and the industry is somewhat cleansed of this at times out of control heavily leveraged Bitcoin futures gambling market, if they could bring that into a more regulated format, they'd feel more comfortable with it. Obviously, futures are normally done on big exchanges, and I think that's the future, no pun intended, of this Bitcoin derivatives industry, is they're trying to clear out the field so that the big boys like the CBOE, the CME, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, they can be the homes of futures trading for assets like Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. I believe that this is a step on the way. And this was also what was told to me by our business lawyers months ago. And the reason why we did not go through with what would have been a very easy and friction-free setup of a futures exchange on the Binance Cloud program was because we heard that there was a regulatory crackdown coming. And it was with the final goal of establishing a Bitcoin ETF. Many analysts have predicted that if a Bitcoin ETF happens, it would be the catalyst to move as high as a 50K Bitcoin and beyond. Because the biggest institutions in the world, think pension funds and other types of endowments, could easily put in money in this regulated environment. Whereas it's much less likely that they're going to set up a Coinbase account and start buying Bitcoin on spot. That's just not how these big institutions will function. They're going to color inside the lines here and make sure that they do what they've done before, which is invest in equities and commodities and stuff that is publicly traded on regulated markets. And so to me, this is a tremendously bullish step and it confirms the information that I heard just a few months ago, and it makes me think that this is part of a larger strategy and an evolution of the industry. And these growing pains were inevitably going to be painful because we all know that there's a ton of behavior in crypto land that either needs to be regulated or needs to be discontinued altogether. If you want crypto to be mainstream, if you want your grandma holding and spending Bitcoin, then you need to understand that there was going to be push and pull along the way. And I don't think anyone should really be concerned about Arthur Hayes and the BitMEX gang. God knows how much money they have stashed around the world. I am confident that they'll be okay with this, whether it's a fine or anything else that they have to pay. I think everything will work out for them. And I genuinely believe that this is a step in the right direction for the entire industry. So have no fear about these temporary dumps as I believe they're just that, temporary. And if we do get a Bitcoin ETF as a result of clearing the field of exchanges like BitMEX, and we can assume that there might be other mercantile exchanges, futures exchanges, that don't do KYC that come into the frame next as targets, well, I believe that that's incredibly bullish for the space. Again, if you got value out of this, please smash that like button. If you see the like button and it's not blue, that means it's very sad and it wants you to go ahead and destroy it. If you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to hit that sub button. We're giving away a ledger each and every week here. And if you're a subscriber, you'll be entered to win, but you have to comment below this video. If you guys want to connect with me personally, I'm tweeting stuff like this all the time, making your day better. So I encourage you guys, follow me on Twitter or join my Telegram group. The links for both of those are in the description. As usual, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. My name's Elio Trades, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.